Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you and uh, love to everybody out there. I just want to uh, talk about uh, the edited edition of the Quran, a critical edition of the Quran. It's something that, uh, it's an argument that I've been developing and, and working on and I've had two opportunities now to bring it up. I brought it up uh, down at Tide Park uh, with... Uh, an apologist down there called Shamsi and I've also brought up the issue with another apologist called Mansour now the Mansour debate was it was a, it was not very edifying it was quite a dogfight the guy has really really ripped into a lot of Christians over the years and uh, I knew that he wouldn't give me much of a chance to get my stuff out what I wanted to say so I really, really made it tough for him and I, I kept interrupting him and all sorts of things to stop him from trying to dominate. But it wasn't very edifying. But there was a reason for me debating him really. I wanted to get a point in and I, I wanted to make a point. All the issues that he brought up about... Um, all the issues that he brought up about... Um, what was it about uh, the canon and is the Bible the word of God? They were all smoke strings screens for me. I just wanted to bring up this issue about the edited edition of the Quran. And uh, I believe that as Christians we should conduct ourselves in a, in a, in a loving way. And even though I was difficult with uh, Mansour, I, 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 I love the guy and um I wish the guy well and I'm happy to debate him if he wants to debate in a more academic way. I offered that opportunity for him. He didn't take that opportunity. So he could have had a more civil uh, debate, but he chose the more kind of uh, street fight debate where you interrupt each other, which um, if that's what he wanted to choose, um, as long as I could get my point in about the Quran, I was, I was happy. And it was a battle of wills. He wanted to break my will. And I wanted to show him that Christians are strong in the Lord. And you can't break our will. Uh, we're strong in Jesus. So anyhow. I brought up this issue about the edited critical edition of the Quran. And I've asked these two Muslim apologists. Is there any Quran that we have today that has been a is that is a critical edition? And these Muslim apologists say yeah. In the time of Uthman there was a critical edition. And my argument is scholarship moves on and we've never seen a critical edition in modern times. What that means is that whatever claims Muslims are, are, are making about the Quran has never changed. It's vacuous, intellectually backward if they've never done any critical scholarship today. Especially when we find many, many new Qurans from ancient times. And I was quite encouraged to, to find a, 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 a Muslim man who had heard my debate with Mansour and when I was preaching in Manchester the other day a couple of days ago this young man came up to me and we had a discussion and it was a really good discussion it was an excellent amicable discussion and he, and, and, and he knew the score he knew the score what um, what it was like down at Speaker's Corner he knew what it was like and he, he was wise and he understood my why I was the way I was down there because he said you know it's difficult for people to listen to each other down there but when he was going as, as we talked about this debate that I had with Mansour and the issues of Quranic text and it was a very enlightening discussion that we had together the young man said that he agreed that I had a point that if what Muslims and, and what he is saying and Muslims are saying, if it is true that the Quran has not changed, then bring it on. Textual criticism should be done and we should have a critical edition of the Quran done today. Now the Cambridge Companion to the Quran says categorically that there has never been a critical edition of the Quran. So... This is an issue that has not been resolved. And so long as it's not resolved, 
It casts a shadow over the apologetics of Mansoor and Shamsi and any uh, apologist in Hyde Park or any Muslim scholar around the world who claims that the Quran has not changed. They cannot claim that. And, and that is why they've not done a critical edition. They've not done a critical edition so that they can hide the issue. So they can come to the Christian and say, oh, the Bible's changed, and they can attack the Bible and attack critical editions of the Bible. But when you go to criticize them, you can't because a critical edition has not been done. So it's intellectually dishonest. It's intellectually backward. It's intellectually dishonest because you can't criticize them because they've not done it. <laughs> we, we don't have the evidence there. How convenient. But it, it, they don't get away with it. Because when we do go back in history, when we do go back to the sources, when we do go back to the ancient texts, when we do go back to classical Islam, when we do go back to the hadiths of Bukhari and Muslim, we find textual variants. We find that there are verses missing and taken out here and there. So the Muslims can try to hide, the Muslim scholars can try to hide and not have a critical edition now so that we can't see what the true state of affairs is with the Quran. But when we actually get to the sources of the ancient sources, they reveal a frightening and startling fact that there has been textual variance. Now, I would agree with Mansour that the Quran is a fixed text. Now, listen to this, Mansour, and listen to this, Muslims, because you'll be dancing up and down and thinking, yabba yabba doo da, yabba doo da, yabba yabba doo da. You'll be thinking, oh, wow, he's admitted the Quran's a fixed text. But when I mean a fixed text, I mean a doctored text. You see, there have been key points in the history of the Quran, such as um, Uthman, and then other uh, cal uh, leaders later on, who were involved in the editing process and the production of Qurans. And what that means is vital evidence and clues to whether there are variants or not have been got rid of. So in the time of Uthman, there were Quranic texts burnt. So we don't we, we have a fixed text in the sense that it's a doctored text, a controlled text. Now that doesn't mean to say there aren't any variants. There are many, many textual variants. But what it is is there has been a standardization of the copying of the text. And that means that there's been a lot of deception involved in that. Whenever you get politics and political leaders involved in doing textual criticism, then you can guarantee those political leaders are doing some de doctrine and meandering with the text. And that's what you have with... So when Mansour says the Quran is a fixed text, you might as say the Quran is a political text, fi been fixed and mandated by politicians and political leaders. Proof of that is the time of Uthman. We have evidence with Uthman. Uh, it, you, you want me to substantiate that? Okay, let me substantiate it. So I keep going on about this and I hope that scholars uh, take this issue up and run with this issue. This is a very strategic issue. And I keep bringing it up, and I'm going to keep bringing it up, because it means that Islam has no intellectual credibility whatsoever. It is intellectually backward. The, f the fact that the Muslim scholars of today have never done a critical assessment, a critical edition of the Quran, is proof positive of intellectual backwardness and um, is a scandal in the Islamic world and the scholarly world both in the West and the East and, and, and there's no two ways about it it doesn't matter what anybody else says that is the state of affairs 
when you, when you want material, I have so much material here. Forgive me. It's not here. It's not here. But it, I have a. Um, I, I don't want. I've got uh, here. Preservation of the Quran by Samuel Green. Um, and he, he, he writes in Sayyid Bakari, narrated by Zim uh, bin uh, Thabit. Therefore, I, Umar, suggest you, Abu Bakar, order that the Quran be collected. I said to Umar, How can you do something which Allah Apostle did not do? Abu Bakr kept on urging me to accept his idea until Allah opened my chest for what he had opened the chest of Abu Bakr and Umar. So I started looking for the Quran and collected from what was written on palm stalks and white stones and also from the men who knew it by heart till I found the last verse of Surat at Tabu Repentance with Abu Kuzami al Ansari and I did not find it with any other than him. Sayyid Bakar al Bukhari, Volume 6. 61509 and then there are um, texts as well that talk about Uthman burning the text but there's proving my point there's a political that's political that's a political leader producing a text and so it's going to be politically manipulated you know it's going to be doctored And that's that's the issue. I didn't get the verse. Now before Masur says, "Oh, that's by a scholarship you're quoting from Samuel Green or whatever," I wanted to quote a, a pure ver a pure hadith on its own without being in, in any article. Uh, but I couldn't find it. I had it in my file, but I couldn't find it. So please uh, don't start saying "Oh, by a scholarship." Okay, uh, I've read the hadith. All right, so you don't have to follow what. Samuel Green says you can actually read Bukhari yourself. Um, yeah, so so basically, if there's if there's been no Quran done, that's a critical addition textually, where all the new all the Qurans that have been found are brought together, and we do textual criticism. It means that Islam is intellectually backward. Excuse me, and and really has no intellectual substance or foundation whatsoever it's an absolute scat it's an absolute sham that islam has never done a critical edition in modern times of the quran i challenge any muslim scholar out there to refute what i've said no muslim scholar out there in the world today can refute what i have said and it's no good banging on about chain of narration going back to uh, the time of muhammad saying oh it's chain of narration it's no good going back to the time of Uthman saying a critical edition has been made then that's past we got to deal with what is today scholarship moves on we find new manuscripts and when we find new manuscripts we have to assess the manuscripts with the old manuscripts and then we have to come to a critical edition period if you can't do that and if you don't want to do that or if you don't do that you're not even in the game as an intellectual in defense of anything you're just in the game of smoke and mirrors. You're in the game of hiding truths. You're in the game of deception. You're worse than a cult. Because at least cults, we can find some information out. But you're not producing any information. You're not producing a critical edition of the Quran. I know it's a tough thing that I'm saying. And it's a hard thing that I'm saying. But how many times have you as Muslims gone to the Christian and said, The Bible's changed. The Bible's changed. You need to be called out. You haven't even got a Bible. You haven't even got a Quran. Whatever you've got in your hand right at the moment, that is not the Quran. Because you've never done a critical edition of the Quran to prove that that is the Quran that you hold in your hand. And going back to the past and saying, oh, the past, the past, the past, doesn't cut it. It just doesn't cut it. 
and uh, you can make all the arguments you want about the past, the past, and and use the argument for chain of narration. The the end of the day, whether you whether chain of narration is correct or not, you have still got to do textual criticism. And when you do textual criticism, the text doesn't lie, and the texts show that there are textual variants. If it's not tr if that is not the case, then what have you to fear? If chain of narration has preserved the Quran, then what have you to fear? Why can't we gather all the ancient manuscripts of the Quran that we have from Birmingham to Turkey and gather them all and make one standardized Quran? Why? I tell you why. Because you will find textual variants and all this chain of narration and all this stuff of the past in the time of Uthman will unravel in the time of Uthman will unravel and you will be found out to be lying to the public around the world today. And billions of Muslims need to realize that what I'm saying is right and I'm asking you to come over to Jesus, come to the Lord. We don't hide our textual criticism. Our textual criticism is there for everybody to see. It's not a fixed text because it's not a doctored text. Nobody was able to control the full flow of the text of the New Testament or even the Old Testament. There were a variety of streams where these books were copied so no one person could manipulate the text and yet it's 99% accurate in its text in its text when it comes only 1% that 1% is to do with spellings to do with a bit of grammar and to do with a few verses and that's what you're going to get in textual criticism I'm willing to debate any Muslim out there on this issue of textual criticism. You're never going to win the argument. No chance. The sources in your own hadiths, in your own history, prove there are textual variants. Prove that the Quran has changed. The and, 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 and it's not. The Quran that you have today is not what Uthman uh, produced. It just isn't. Okay? And uh, if, if, if I'm wrong then why haven't your top scholars made a critical edition of the Quran today, getting all the manuscripts and, and saying, look, we've looked at all the manuscripts, here's a list of our critical edition of the Quran, we looked at all these manuscripts, and it's been corrected. Now, I, I gather in the next year or two, the Muslim world will start to produce, because of this video, and I'm, I'm not boasting, I'm really not boasting, but I gather in the next few years, there will be critical editions of the Quran being produced because of this video. And when they're produced, they'll have all the list of the manuscripts that they consulted. But I guarantee that it will be a, a botched job, that it, it will not be uh, a true state of affairs because they will not be really critically examining the text. They'll be just uh, saying that they've looked at the text when they haven't. What we need is a consensus of Western and Eastern scholars getting together, being intellectually honest, and really grappling with the ancient texts that we have, and really coming together in an honest way, and saying the true state of affairs when it comes to a critical, modern critical edition of the Quran today. That is what we need today. Clarity, honesty, and real scholarship on the Quran. Not this kind of cultish stuff where we're left in the dark and we can't even find out what the truth is. I think this is a powerful argument. It ain't going to go away. I'm going to keep bringing it up when I go to Hyde Park. And uh, it, 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 it kind of shames Islam for the lack of scholarship in this area. A religion that has been noted for doing great scholarship. You, ha you have great scholars in the past. And you're not cutting it in the modern world. You, you're kind of like backward looking uh, intellectually on this issue. Those are my thoughts. Thank you for listening and God bless you.